It's time for Smartacular with Jez and that guy over there, Mass Hobo. Hello. Hello. He always sounds nice no matter what weird introduction I do. He's always like, hello. I I don't know. There's got to be some consistency here because it's a serious shit, not our recording (laughs) schedule. No, it's not that. So what we try to be consistent in is the important stuff, like our greeting that I don't do consistently, and he does. It says a lot. It really does. So you guys, we've had a little bit of a, a, a hiatus. Unscripted, that's a big word. Yeah, it's unscripted hiatus. A sabbatical, that's an even, uh, that's yeah. an even bigger word. Oh, wow. That's, yeah. that's top top shelf word right there. Um, we've been on a life sabbatical. Just the holidays happened, and then life things happened, and... We are absolutely, we have to apologize to the tens of people who have eagerly been anticipating this episode that's coming up right now. Like, I've had at least two emails from the fans, the tens of them, saying, when are you going to do your next episode? So I feel like, officially, we fucking made it. Yeah, we're good. I think uh, we... (laughs) <laughs> well, that third person Big that time. probably that probably listens was just busy and didn't have time to type an email, or they were driving yeah. or something, you know. Yeah, yeah, they were driving and listening to us, mm-hmm. I'm sure, and they just they were like, I can't text and drive. Yeah, so that's cannot, not safe. No, it's not, and I don't want to get in a wreck, so I'm going to go ahead and hold off. I don't want to get in a wreck, and then they this hear episode. this podcast is the last thing I listen to because then they won't even try to rescue <laughs> me. So, no. No, they're like, wow, they're wow, listening fucking to leave weird, them. random. Just they le- don't deserve to Leave live. them in the fucking car. <laughs> Crush them up when it goes to the junkyard. <laughs> yeah, so that's the level we're at here. That's it. And you guys, we have we've put a lot of time and effort and thought into this episode. And by that, I mean like two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes. Easy. Of, of, oh, three. I'll even of, say three. Three. And... And you guys don't know what the topic is yet, but I can tell you that behind Mass Hobo, he has put a special scene uh, on his graphics where it's some men around a campfire with a guitar. And honestly, they look like they're in the militia and that they're getting ready to kill something. I don't know. Uh, It's actually actually from the game Stalker, so you're not too far off. Not really a militia, but but yeah, they're... Yeah, some (laughs) post-apocalyptic... Something. It's post-apocalyptic Chernobyl. This is this is in the exclusion zone. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. I guessed it right. Yeah, you're close. Shit. Real close. I'm almost a gamer. Damn. So uh there's that lovely uplifting scene behind him, which to me really introduces our next topic perfectly, which is camping. Outdoorsy camping. And uh, I think what I'm seeing there is very representative of how I feel. When I have to go camping, (laughs) Um, (laughs) which is, I feel like, did something happen? Am I in a post-apocalyptic world? Because why the fuck am I here camping? That's my thoughts. (laughs) What the fuck did I I do to deserve this? Yeah, what kind of what kind of crime against humanity (laughs) did I? Why have you forsaken me? Exactly, exactly. So, um. I know people, it's crazy. People have all different kinds of feels about camping. Um, and they and they go from, they run, you know, from one end, they, they run the gamut. People who just love it, who are totally into it, who are like, I'm going to camping world and I'm going to go buy, you know, I'm going to go and, and get all of the camping things and stuff, you know, and they have a, a whole truckload full of shit. I grew you know, up, I grew up kind of. Camp. Not on that far of a spectrum. Like, we didn't buy literally everything, but we had plenty of camping stuff. My dad was a big outdoorsman growing up. Well, and I think part of that is from how he grew up. He mm-hmm. Every year they hunted because they had to, and so he, he'd camp because, mm-hmm. you know, it was a way to stay out longer. And being a kid out in the middle of nowhere in Texas, you, he probably went camping a lot. I don't I don't know. He doesn't, doesn't talk about it specifically, but we did grow up camping or staying we grew up with Boy Scouts. I was in the Boy Scouts, so there was camping there and learning about the outdoors and stuff there, which I wish I would have stuck with, but that's a whole other story. Um, I My family's idea of camping was at the last 
whatever, three days before we were going to go camping, they would rent a Winnebago. That was our camping. Is, That's my parents now. They have a camper. They don't. Yeah. My dad probably would if and, I was like, hey, dad, you want to go sleep out in the woods? He probably would just to do it, with, just to hang out with me. But uh, yeah, I don't we, think either one of us is the, at the point where we want to fucking sleep on the ground. The fucking ground yeah, we anymore. didn't do the tent thing. We didn't do the tent thing. My parents, I think they knew um, that that just would be a friggin' nightmare. It was because with at the time there was three of us, me and my sister and my little brother who was seven years younger. My sister's two years older. So um, my older sister is developmentally disabled. So there was always some challenges, and and putting us three in a tent together would Would've, result yeah. in the death. Of one of us because we didn't like each other that much. Or two of like, you. Three kids yeah, enter, one always... kid leaves. I... It would have been the younger brother. He would have probably been smart and hung out in the corner and hid and let y'all two just go oh, at yeah. it and then finish off the, exactly. the loser and come out. Yeah, that would that would have been the correct plan to go with. And so me and my sister already had to share a room and it was divided down the middle like we had captain's beds it was, the bedroom was delight you could see the line hers was neat as a pin mine looked like a fucking bomb had went off with slob like it was just very apparent that two different kinds of people lived in this one small room and we didn't like each other and i don't know why our parents insisted that that had to be the thing i would have rather bunked with my brother who was seven years younger but um who got a room to himself by the way so surely for happens. being a male and being younger fuck not the two fair. girls, if there was Not two fair. boys and one girl, they would have put the boys together. Yeah, but that's just that's how the that's the them's Ugh. the cards. Yeah, that was how that's how that went down. So when we would be camping, they knew better than to put us in a tent. That was not going to work. That shit would have well been flattened out in the middle of the night. Yeah, yeah, and then and then they would have had to put up the tent, and they don't yeah. want to do that. Yeah, nobody. So. So camping for us um, was usually because my dad wanted to go fishing somewhere. And he had to take everybody. Um, yeah, we all had to go because it was his vacation time from his job. So and There's no way in hell mom's like, going to stay I... home and watch three fucking kids by herself. She's, she's yeah. going to drag everybody with her. Yeah. Yeah. We're all going down together. So she would she would drag us um we would all get dragged, and we didn't want to go because my dad's the, the vacation spots that we would go to were some random lake out in the middle of nowhere where the fishing was good. Yeah. And uh, it was not never shit like out there. Lake Tahoe. It's not Lake Tahoe. It's not, you know, some awesome lake. It's some random half day's walk literally, from the parking spot carrying a bunch of yes. shit out to the middle of nowhere. Yeah, and one of them was called Timothy Lake, and one of them was called Horsefly Lake. That was probably where and the really good fishing in, was. In Canada, uh, in Canada, so the the they were selling us on. We're going to Canada on vacation, like that sounded. Oh my gosh, the Canadian wilderness! How beautiful! No, I mean the Canadian wilderness is beautiful, but it's also but very Horsefly similar Lake, to the Pacific Northwest. Where we live, yeah, it's that that yeah. whole region is pretty much the same. If you go up, it doesn't. It's the same. You have it's, to go pretty far from the border scenery. to see a change of major scenery. That's like, oh, that's that's different. Yeah, we were just going more north of where we were, and it's exactly the same on this side. So it uh, horsefly lake has a name for a reason, and yes, it is because of horseflies, <laughs> exactly. And it's like, uh, and they are there, and they're big, and they're obnoxious, and they bite you. They fucking and- hurt too. This shit hurts. Yeah, and so I'm like, that's where you choose to take your family? <laughs> really? Uh, and, and we fa- found out that I was, like, highly allergic to mosquitoes. Oh, there was one called Mosquito Something, too. I'm like, why would you fucking go someplace Because the fishing is good. A mosquito. After, yeah, yeah. So, thanks, Dad. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then there's, this is back in the days of yore, so there's no, obviously... This is pre having any kind of cell phones or anything. This is the 70s. You took 80s, coloring books and yes. drew in the dirt and yeah. threw rocks in the water, and your dad would yell at you for making a lot of noise. Yes, and don't disturb the fish. Yeah. Um, and you, if you were lucky, you had a radio. 
that could get some reception, possibly. Uh, if you stood on top something... of something like a picnic table or a tall rock. Yeah, yeah, and that was about what I am. That's usually what we made my little brother do. He'd have to stand up there with the shortest arm person up had to hold up the radio with a bunch of foil wrapped around it. Yeah, so we could have some damn music out in the middle. of I the was the little brother. I was the TV remote for the longest time, and we didn't have a remote, so I know what that's like. Yeah, it was important, important things for him. So we were out there, and so. The trip, the Horsefly Lake trip, this this sticks out in my head. It's it's a memory burned in my memories. Uh, so we leave and we're heading over. All, you know, you go up all these weird old highways. and If you look, look over the well side, you'll fucking have a panic attack because you look like you're going to fall off the side of a mountain. Yeah, and there's no guardrails. No. Right? It's all graveled and they're doing construction on it uh, all the time. Whenever you go, they're probably still doing construction on that road. There's huge potholes. It's all graveled. And my sister and I and my brother are sitting in. We're not even belted in. I'm just thinking about this. There's no seat belts in this. Like this. You don't need a seat belt. They die. They die. You'll make another one. Yeah. And so you're up walking around in this Winnebago. and But the little uh, dining room table that converts into the bed. Yeah. We're sitting there, and there's cupboards above us because they put cupboards all around. Yeah, each yeah, side yeah. Of and they have the little Winnebago. latches on them that are supposed to hold them closed, but they probably don't because they're old as shit and been rented a thousand times. So we're using our coloring books, right? We're we're at the table being good in coloring, correcto, like we're supposed to. Um, and the we hit a big pothole. This is the first part of the trip. We're not very far into the trip. We hit a pothole. And the cupboards fling open and a ketchup bottle because we don't have plastic bottles yet. We have yeah, there's still the glass. glass, yeah, bottles. glass yeah. The ketchup bottle flies out and breaks on the table all over our coloring books. And there's glass everywhere. And now our coloring books are ruined because they're soaked with ketchup. Um, so that was one of our main activities. Oh, rip. Right there. Yeah, and everything's and colored now. Already, yeah, all it's done. All red. Uh, you dip a fry in it, it's perfect. So, there's glass everywhere. Now, we don't also have ketchup, by the way, which is a very important Which is important for it. three kids to have out in the middle of nowhere is ketchup because yeah. one, it's like yeah. half a dessert, and two, it's about the only thing kids will fucking eat on whatever you're eating Any- hamburgers, hot dogs, whatever sandwiches, you Any- just yeah. ketchup that shit up, fries. So my mom is yelling at my dad because he hit a pothole and it's honestly the whole road is a pothole to be yeah. honest that's not like he did it on purpose and he probably had to he had to make a, a decision between hitting the big one or hitting the bigger one and he had to go with the big or one or going over the side yeah going over the side and I- <laughs> so so we're all upset and crying because our coloring books are ruined and i no, I'm the only one who actually has the awareness because my my sister is developmentally disabled. My brother's, brother's seven young. years younger. Yeah. I know we're totally fucked. I'm like, well, there went all the There's the weekend entertainment. Yeah, that's what we were going to do. I mean, we, we had some other stuff to do, but that was a big part of what we were probably going to do. So this is the days also. My, my mom is running around screaming and yelling and cleaning up the ketchup in the glass so we don't kill ourselves so uh she's doing that we're crying it's a good trip so far it's good um and my dad's probably just like i just want out of this thing and i want to be fishing right now he's probably looking at the door he's like man if i just jump out i can say it was an accident and Mm -hmm. i can still go fishing before it gets dark i'm sure he regrets that he didn't do that or he probably would have regretted that he's not with us anymore but he probably wanted to leave us then i'm sure so uh we get that mess cleaned up and my mom goes to grab the eight track tapes it's the days of eight track tapes people and you guys they're a suitcase yeah they're held in a little suitcase yeah and it held like what like 16 or 24 tapes or something if you got like the long one yeah it's probably harvest gold or some like teal color or something like that avocado green or something uh, so he, we go to grab the suitcase full of, uh, the eight tracks and we forgot my mom did not pack them in. So we have no two. music. We have 
No, we have three because I remember the songs. We have three eight tracks with us that are in the like glove compartment. Somebody grabbed those or they were in there. Maybe they were courtesy ones. I don't know. So the three eight tracks we have are <clears throat> the uh, Fifth Dimension, Freddie Fender, and Gladys Knight and the Pips. Oh, that's a good those one, though. Pretty- that's a solid. Yeah. I would have so, I would have jammed yeah. that Gladys Knight the whole we trip. We did. My my dad tend to well uh, Fifth Dimension's not bad either. Freddie Fender only had I'll be there before the next teardrop falls, and I don't re- and Feliz Navidad. He sang those two things. Um, I mean, he sang other things, but the ones those were, were the famous. big ones. So I so when so those were in our rotation as we were driving. We would just flip out those three, and by the time. Uh, we got back. I knew all of the Gladys Knight one because we played that one the most. But uh, it was the uh, version. It was the whatever the the record album would have been, I guess, or the release. The eight track was uh, the one that had "He's Leaving on the Midnight Train to Georgia." Leaving on the Midnight Train. Oh, that's so. That's a good I was song. Like, I, I know. I'd rather live in his world than live without him. So I was totally, uh, I was, I wanted to be a pip at the end. I was going to say, what if, I was like, what if that's the turning point that made you realize you really enjoyed singing? It, well, I, I did. I mean, I think it kind of was. Um, I knew that I didn't want to sing backup for Freddie Fender for sure. By the but end Gladys of that. Knight, that's a, that's a I was into bold it. choice. That's a good choice. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, the fifth dimension, or it might have been Marilyn McCoo. I it was it was the fifth dimension. Marilyn McCoo was in that. But so a lot of Motown. We had a lot of Motown on that trip. And my dad actually, for being a guy from the Hick Sticks who worked in a mill, was very much into Motown. And that my mom liked country western, old school country western, oh, not the yeah. newer stuff. Yeah, yeah, the old like old. Lynn Lynn Anderson and you know, Loretta Lynn and some of the, you know, traditional, traditional. Uh, country and I didn't like that as much as a little kid so I definitely gravitated more to the Motown and I'd say that that really did instill a love of music so we're in the Winnebago blasting some Freddie Fender hitting some potholes ruining all of the stuff it's not a good trip already it's not a good trip and then we get to the horsefly lake finally and when we get out it is unremarkable that's the only way I can describe it it is unremarkable. Wah, we're, wah, we're at a campsite. Wah, wah. <laughs> I was, I was, um, I think I want to say at the time, if my brother was seven, no, he wasn't that old yet. He might not have even been seven. I'm, I'm probably nine. I'm guessing I'm nine ish. And, um, I, I it's treats. There's a little path to a, a bathroom, but we have a little toilet in the Winnebago. Um, and there is a picnic table, a few big rocks, and that is it. Yeah, that sounds about That's right. That's it. Yeah. Uh, there's a place where you can have your little campfire, but there's not. we're not by any other campsites. We're not by any other humans. There's no other little kids to go and make friends with. Um, there's not a dock. There's nothing. And we're going to be there for a week without coloring books and it's gonna be a fucking murder (laughs) well i was thinking i wanted to kill my parents to be honest at that point i was like i can't fucking believe you brought me here i'm nine i'm nine and i'm thinking i hate you forever i hate you forever (laughs) how dare you and my sister is annoying the shit i'm just ready to smack her i'm like i'm gonna take her behind this tree and beat the shit out of her beat her up i'm gonna fucking beat the shit out of her and my parents aren't gonna be able to hear because i'm gonna take her far enough away i'm gonna be like let's go for a walk let's check out the trail Mm." um and then i'm gonna beat her up because i'm sick the shit of her at this point my little brother is off he he is a instigator he is an, an explorer and he's just a um i, I don't know how to describe him but he's an adventurous guy and always has been so i'm sure he's trying to figure out how to build a zip line or something crazy out of makeshift whatever he's gonna he's gonna macgyver that shit out of 
things he found items. It's not going to be safe, and he's going to do it anyway. So he's off doing that. That sounds cool. Trying to kill himself. Oh, yeah, he's always done stuff like that. He still does stuff like that. So um, so I know that this is not going to go well. And, and we've got seven days of it. And when you're a little kid, seven days is like 14 months. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a fucking time. eternity. Especially without a TV. Like, I'm going to miss Happy Days. I'm going to miss Laverne and Shirley. I'm missing You're going to be Grey's behind American everything. Hero. I'm missing Charlie's Angels. All of my sh- Fantasy Island, all my stuff is being You're missed. now a week behind everything. Yeah, and in those days, they, they you couldn't play it back. Yeah, there wasn't you had to wait for a player. rerun. And, but you first had to know when the reruns were going to air, which was usually before the next new episode. They would do like a, you know, yeah. catch-up sort of thing. But you had to make sure and, and look up the TV miss- guide and make sure it was going to play. Sometimes they didn't. And God forbid that it it was a continued story and you missed one episode, like if it was a two-parter yep. and you missed the first part. Because then you come and be like, oh, last time on such and such. And you're like, no, 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 no. What, what's last time? What are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. So it could be horrible that this would happen. So I was very concerned about my TV shows. You really fucked me over, this. Dad. <laughs> For a fucking fish. I don't even like fish. I didn't even want to eat that. And my dad didn't either. My dad liked just liked to fish. He just liked fish. He didn't like to eat the fish. We had a freezer full of fucking fish. Nobody wanted to eat it. We'd end up giving it away to other people. Now, to be fair, this was salmon. We were going for salmon. Oh, salmon but is I good, was sick though. of salmon. It is good. It was wild caught, and I'm so spoiled because I grew up eating that. But that week, I hated salmon. <laughs> salmon was ruining my life. Um, and... Yeah, my social life was totally ruined. Goddamn I couldn't salmon. call my friends on the phone. <laughs> Fuck you, Salmon. Yeah, it was awful. So uh, I couldn't call my friends. Uh, I couldn't do anything except be with these people that honestly, I didn't really like. <laughs> I didn't really like my family. I was nine and I was above all of that. I was just like, I don't like any of you. I feel I feel no kinship. I kind of liked my little brother. Cold blood. I was like... I, yeah, I know. I know, right? You're not supposed to like your sister. That's not. And my parents took us on this fucking trip. They didn't deserve my love at that point. I'm sure. As soon as December rolled trip, around, though, I really like my parents. They're pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So, no, hold on. This is when we were still Jehovah Witnesses. So there oh, oh so yeah. It was, fucking... it was before my mom got kicked out for smoking. <laughs> so we were still Jehovah Witnesses. So Christmas was not going to make the great equalizer in this situation um so we're we're out there my dad is very happy because he's away from us i was gonna say he's, <laughs> he's probably away, away. he probably went out into the woods and he was like fuck it if i die today that's okay he did he would go out early in the morning and he would not be back till night and this is the thing he didn't invite any of us to go because <laughs> he knew y'all'd fuck it up <laughs> he did he was like he's like not even my little brother Guess he little, he'd probably be doing fucking cannonballs into the goddamn water or throwing rocks at the fish. He would. He would. Absolutely. And I would just talk the whole time. So he knew I was the, ch- obviously, chatty Kathy. So um, none of us got invited. And so we had to stay with my bitter mother, who I don't know why this was better than us just being at home. We could She could have planted us in front of the TV. And now she's having to deal with us. Like there's Actually no having to. There's no safety three buffer board, with the TV. Yes. Three bored kids with one radio and one kid up on a picnic table trying to make the radio work. Um, and complaining. Lots of complaining. Mostly for me. Um, Surprise. Yeah. And my, my older sister was just disgusted, period. That she she didn't like the bathroom, the public restroom or the Winnebago bathroom accommodations. She was not happy with those. I agree with her. They weren't great. Um, my brother was fine. He was he like, just, I will figure he, out. He'll ways. just use the trees. Yeah. Yeah. He was fine. And and he was like um, going to go off. He went off exploring every day. And by exploring, I mean, we lost him and we'd have to go find him every fucking day. Um, he was doing stuff. He was out exploring these woods that were unknown to us. Uh, there was the horse flies to contend with. We had like the this, this stuff that you burn, citronella or oh, whatever. Yeah. I think that horse flies just like that. I think it attracts them even more. I think they, they become stronger with it. 
it doesn't scare them. They're not. They're like, that's for pussies. We don't. Yeah. We don't. We don't acknowledge. We're that. not city it's horse flies, thing. all right. We're fucking. We're middle of nowhere we're horse hardcore. flies, all right. We're hardcore. Uh, so, and then to top it off, I think the only relief my parents got was basically drinking every night. They would play cards and have Harvey Wallbangers. Do you know what a Harvey Wallbanger is? I think so. I knew how to make them. Oh. I knew how to make them from an early age because my parents were alcoholics. So they'd make me go make them because they got too drunk because apparently I was good at it. I made good Harvey Wallbangers, but it's it's vodka, orange juice. It's like a screwdriver, but you float Galliano on the top. The Galliano, which is like the licorice tasting oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So you float that on the top and that is a Harvey Wallbanger. There you go, peeps. Harvey Wallbangers have them. Um so they were doing the Harvey Wallbanger and they would play cards. They would play cards at night, some kind of, I don't know if it was Remy or whatever they were playing, but they would not invite us to also play cards. Because we they'd have to invited. teach you. Yeah. And they weren't going to do that. And so, you know what I did? Because we were all trapped in at night together because we're not often tense. I go fucking blare some Gladys Knight in the pips. That's what I did while they were doing their thing. And I was over there in the corner with Gladys Knight and the pips. I was trying to do the pip moves. I was making up what I would do if I were a pip. Oh, well, that's you good. Know. Yeah. He's leaving, leaving. You know, and I had my little and my little spins. They'd always do a little spin. I, I tried to get my brother to be a pip with me, and he would sometimes. My sister had nothing to do with it. She was just looking at us like, no, absolutely not. Because she was a little older. She was like, I'm not doing that. So, um, so I got my brother in on some pip action because that's what we had to do because you know what? No fucking coloring books. They could have stuck us over on the other table. There's like two little tables. One was the bigger one on one side and then there was a little pop-up. So they were playing cards and drinking their Harvey Wallbangers. You know what didn't break? The bottles of vodka. Those were Those fine. were secured. I'm sure she had those strapped down with like bungee cords. Like those were with bubble wrap. Like, there was nothing going to happen to the two gallons of vodka or whatever the hell. But, no. Ketchup, we don't give a shit about that. That could just break all over the coloring books. We don't care. So, uh, it was a long trip, Mass Hobo. It was a long, long trip. And you know how some people, the families go on vacation and they bond? They get closer that together? That didn't happen. Then. That didn't happen to us. Um, what did happen was I got bit by a lot of mosquitoes and on the way back I got hives. So I was that's how I ended the trip. Covered in hives. Baking soda rubbed on the that was my mom's homeschool remedy was you put blobs of wet baking soda. My grandma did on that on my brother's wasp sting one time. Yeah, it draws this stuff out. It's supposed to draw this stuff, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I was just like, can I have a Harvey Wallbanger? I'm miserable. Um but they didn't give me one. So that was my trip home, just laying on the top bunk, which, by the way, you get your nose gets about two <laughs> inches of clearance. You can't raise up. You have to that. shimmy out the no, side. No, it's like you're in a coffin. Yeah. It's like you're in a coffin. Yeah, you have to scoot over the side. So I was up there the whole time on the trip back because I, I didn't get the horse fly bites, but I did get mosquito bitten. So needless to say, this has set the tone for me camping for the rest of my life. You know, I'm, what, nine years old? And you can see how vivid this is burned into my memory. It's going to be very hard to turn that around. It's hard to overwrite and, that sort of. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so I've always had a hard time with camping. And it wasn't just was not a pleasant experience. Then we also had smelly fish in crates, you know, of ice bringing that back. And you had to smell it the whole way. And I, I would get car sick anyway. So then you're I'm mosquito bitten, feeling a little car sick with the smell of fish in my nose. Cheers to camping. You were, you were not meant to be an, an outdoorsy. No. You like the outdoors, but you don't want to stay there. It's a nice place to visit. You don't want to be there a week for sure. I like to go on day trips. That's That's how I like to enjoy the outdoors. I like to go there, hang out for the day, and go home to my own bed. And I live in the Northwest, so that can happen easily. I can get to woods from my house right here. I have an oak tree preserve that's right right over, like a two-minute walk away. But to go to an actual forest, like if I want to be in a rainforest, I can be there in two and a half hours. If I want to be 
up on a peninsula full of all different kinds of hiking and trails and stuff, hour and a half. Mount Rainier, hour and a half. So those are all accessible. And there's local places too. So I can easily, I'm lucky to live someplace where I can make day trips and that, you know, and have lakes. And, you know, we do have lovely stuff here. And we have a volcano that can blow up at any moment. That's what happens. It's, you know, things happen. Yeah. So what about your camping? I know you, you probably have a better story than that, I'm sure. I have a lot of stories about camping because we went almost every summer growing up. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, and me and my dad hunted when I was between the ages of like 13 till I basically moved out. And even after that, I would go visit and still go, go hunting and stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. wish we could have done more, but things happened. Land got sold up. Wife, ex-wife got pregnant. And so I, I hadn't been basically since, I think I went once after my kid was born. I don't, I couldn't mm-hmm. tell you when she was older. It wasn't any time soon. Uh, but anyway, growing up, we always went, we usually went to Colorado. So we would go and we didn't fly. So we drove everywhere. So it was me, mom, dad, and my older brother and whatever vehicle we had at the time. As we got older, it became minivans because it was just easier to tote people and all their shit. We had to stop less because we could fit a cooler in the minivan right next to the sliding door and somebody could use it to put their feet on. Mom and dad sat yeah. up front. Older brother got the bench in the back because he was taller. I got the bench in the middle. And my feet went on the cooler. So anytime somebody wanted something to eat, I'd have to raise my feet mm-hmm. up or wake up. Most of those trips I spent sleeping. That's probably why I can sleep in the car at any point today. Um, I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of any sleeping. specific story because I have a lot of flashes of different stories, different trips in my head. There was one year where me and my brother were younger. I was probably three or four and he had to have been eight or nine. Maybe he might've been 10. I might've been five. I don't know. Somewhere in there. And we had both gotten camouflage old school eighties. Uh, woods, uh, what is it called? It's their woodland camo pattern. Just their old school eighties military camo. And we had to wear those like the, the desert, whole trip. The desert camo? No, 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 no. This was the old desert green. Colors? This is the stuff you saw in oh. like all the old 80s yes. movies that everybody was wearing yes. back then. I think it was just called Woodland yes. back then. Mm-hmm. Um, we wore that, and we had to wear it the entire trip. Every day. It was a t-shirt and pants. And it was my mom was washing them all the time. All the time. There's, there's videos and pictures so of me and him just... In that, and that's literally the only time you should get pictures of us, and that's all we were wearing. Yeah, it's like, did you take this picture in one day? No, this was over the whole year. Yeah, basically, <laughs> yeah. This was an entire, like, week and a half in the summer or something like that. Because it was about two days of driving, <laughs> and we'd stay there for three or four days and two days back. Uh, and I remember vaguely Were there some any of, horse flies? Not that I remember. We kind of went all over and did a bunch of different stuff uh, a lot of the time. But we always stayed at like a campground somewhere for for the most part. Occasionally we'd stay at a hotel, but that was that was pretty rare just because it would cost too much money. Uh, my parents saved pennies where they could, like by eating in the van, by eating in the van and stopping on the side of the road to make lunches and stuff like that to, so we could do other stuff. Mm-hmm. Totally fun. Um, you know what's cool about the era that you were camping is your ketchup came in plastic bottles. We didn't have a yeah, lot of ketchup so with us. We had mustard. We you didn't mustard. have to fear yeah. you were going to lose a major condiment. No, and, but it was in a cooler on the floor. It was Unless that car did a mm-hmm. rollover, we were Secured. good. Yeah, it was good. Secured. Very and there was, a, there was a couple times my dad always... Um, that's the ones I can remember was... And then there was a couple years I can remember us being in this old pickup. He had like a like an extended cab Ford. It was one of like the old F F one fifties, I think is what it was back. I think that's what he was driving mm-hmm. back then. It's been so long. Um like I said, I can only I can't remember a full trip. I just can't. I remember one year mm-hmm. we rented a cabin where we were staying in like a campground instead of a hotel. And the door frames were so low that my dad hit his head on them when he walked through. But, of course, he didn't know that until we were in the building. 
And the front door was fine. The front door was fine. So he walked through it like normal. He was in the kitchen walking from the kitchen to another room, and he fucking brained himself. And he did it two or three times because... You just don't think. You yeah, think and, that you're going to clear your yeah. door. Yeah. And so then one oh time gosh. he comes. So then one time he he comes through and he's fucking. He's got one of the big ass like two handle pots on his head and he fucking catches that door frame <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> oh uh, oh. One year he broke his ankle. Ooh. We were climbing. Uh, we were going up this mountain trail somewhere, and there was a. Uh, a little tiny stream you had to just kind of jump across. It was like coming down the mountain, like the stream was coming down the side of the mountain, and it had like a path that wound, you know, kind of up and through the up to the top or whatever. And as we were going up it, we were trying to jump across, and each one of us, it was like, you know, the parent would grab the hand and you'd leap, and they'd give you a little extra boost to make it across. It wasn't dangerous. It was just that it was slippery. And my dad yeah. was... I think he was already had already crossed it once or something was coming across it and he slipped on a rock and busted his ankle up bad enough. And so we're in the hospitals. I forget which town in Colorado. We're in. We, then he had to walk down with a broken ankle, essentially. Ow. Um, and I think I stayed with him the whole time while we were coming down the mountain. I think my mom and older brother went to go get the Help. truck. We were, they the were, truck. we were in the truck at the time because there for and my mom couldn't drive it was a standard and my mom couldn't drive it oh oh no yeah and it was one of the old school it still had the bench seat up front and everything and uh so your dad had to shift with the broken ankle no he just drove with his left foot and he put his right leg up oh across like the cooler gotcha. in the middle of the truck and he he drove himself to the nearest hospital with a busted ankle oh my gosh and then they had to of course we're sitting in the hospital and going through all that rigmarole and uh, this was before the healthcare system was a fucking total shambles and people actually went to the hospital for actual emergencies not just for the fucking cold for care apologies mm-hmm. if y'all can hear the cat um and we'll talk about the cat in a minute oh god and um <laughs> And I only I I, oh, I, I hear I, yeah, I hear fuck. I hear <laughs> I, I have flashes of like the hospital and I don't really I think I talked to somebody there but I was I've always been that way I've always managed to find to talk to somebody wherever I go. My ex wife said I find a friend wherever I go because I'll talk to anybody I don't give a shit anyway. <laughs> but then he he basically so don't feel special if Mass Hobo talks to yeah, you because yeah. he doesn't give a shit. No, he'll no. talk to anybody. I will. Don't don't be flattered. Be flattered. You're talking to me. <laughs> but uh, but then I have, I, then I vaguely remember him driving home, almost the entire way with his leg in a cast on the cooler. Wow. My dad was fucking. He's, that's a lot. My dad's I mean, built different. That's that's for sure. That's powering through. That is powering through. At, my dad sure as hell wasn't going to try to teach my mom how to drive a fucking standard. No. And this was they'd end up divorced. This was like a you know. Either late seventies, early eighties. It might have been a mid eighties F one fifty, and so I don't even think it was a V six back then. I don't think they put V sixes in those yet. So I can't remember. Like I said, it's been forever. But it's the, not. It's it's not the time to teach someone. No, to, no. to drive a stick when you have kids with you and you're coming back from a trip and your husband has broken his ink. That's not when you want to learn. No, it's not when you want to learn. Not the best circumstances. No. Not at all. <laughs> oh God. my God. So so overall, though, you guys kind of had fun. Like, yeah, we usually had fun because we you'd find a campground, usually rent a cabin because it was cheaper, and we'd find other little kids that were out there, and we'd hang out. We'd go explore, get in trouble, go fishing with my dad. You know, do all I, the fairly I normal stuff. I kind of stuff. like my my preferred mode of vacationing is like a um, getting a an Airbnb or something where you basically have a kitchen and like a little apartment or something. Yeah. And I I don't really love motels. I mean, you think you hear me talking about, you know, going in the Winnebago. Here's the thing. I don't mind an RV when it's at at a place that doesn't have horse flies. Like an RV setup is actually okay. If you want to, like if you're going to the beach or if you want to go somewhere where there's amenities and things to do. Or you're within walking distance of normal yeah. Well, yeah. So I don't mind RVs. Stuff. I don't, 
I don't want tents. I'm I'm too much of a princess for that. I've I don't slept in tents a lot. Ground. It doesn't. I haven't done it in years just because I've never gone and and me and it my dad haven't been now. and I don't have. But you're I, in I mean, your thirties now and it will hurt. I I'll do it. I don't give a shit. I'll do it. But good. I know you'll do it. But I don't want you to be paralyzed from the waist down when you wake up because you slept on a rock. Because there was a rock pinching a major nerve. I've slept on the ground and it's been at an incline where my head was below my feet and my blood was rushing to my head the whole night. You don't want to, just don't sleep on the ground. If you're over 28, you shouldn't do it. It's no good anymore. I'm just going to, I'll tell you, I'll swear to God, if you go and do it now, you will hate yourself in the morning. Oh, I can't sleep. You'll do it. I can't sleep on the couch wrong now. Yeah, yeah, things change. Things change. So I need the RV with a decent mattress. I need a ho- if I'm going to stay in a hotel, it has to have a de- decent mattress and a decent pillow. And if I'm renting an Airbnb, it has to have a decent mattress and a decent pillow. Do we see a theme here? I need a fucking good bed, people. And I'll pay money for it. So when I go and pay a lot of money and they give me some flintstone slab of rock with with pockets of tissue in it, so you think you're in a firm bed, but all of a sudden you roll over and this other section isn't firm. I'm mad when that happens. I want them to put a lot of money into the mattress. If I'm spending 200 fucking $50 a night for a hotel, that bed better be fucking awesome. Why is it not? Why would you make the bed not awesome for that? You can't charge me that if you're not giving me a D. De- I'm there to sleep. Or to have sex. And either way, I want it to be on a comfortable bed. Either way, either way, my back is going to hurt. This bed ain't just right. <laughs> exactly. Either one of those situations can paralyze me. Sadly, even the sleeping one can. I've hurt my neck in my sleep before. So that's princess. my criteria. I am such a princess. I deserve it. My dad took me to Horsefly Lake when I was nine, and I'm scarred. And you're, you're going to ride that fucking sp- train into the grave. <laughs> my coffin better be comfortable as shit. <laughs> It better be. I don't want anything pinched after I'm dead. Damn it. So, uh, so I really prefer, like, I, I like, especially if I'm with another human person, I like to have the little Airbnb set up so I cannot be with them 24 seven. Like in a hotel room, you're both in the same room, the whole, you know, if you're, if you're there, you're there together three feet apart. Now, what's nice about, you know, living in the era of 2022 is you can put in your AirPods and look at your phone for seven hours and ignore them. That's an option. Now it didn't used to be used to have to like have eye contact and actually talk to them. So I, I, I think it's nicer and more polite if I can just go into another room and not have to see them and they don't have to see me and we can have our alone time away from each other. That's That's part of the vacation. Isn't that lovely? (laughs) <laughs> I feel like everybody now will have a contest. Who wants to go on vacation with Jez? <laughs> we'll, we'll spend uh, you time mean, you ignoring mean each we... other. I can guarantee you of that. Yeah. Vacation I, while we I, don't I, hang I, out? Someday, I totally want to go on vacation with you so we can just ignore each other. So we can go <laughs> into the opposite rooms and just ignore each other. Or I can text you from the other room. There you I go. Know you're like seven feet away. You'll be in the other room and I'll be in there and I'll be like, hey, what's up? What's going on? I'll miss you. If I'm just, that's the thing is I want to miss you a little bit. If I'm going to be with you 24 <laughs> seven, I need to be in a separate room for a little while so I can feel like I'm missing. When, when I'm on the shitter then, is my vacation vacation. Right, right. And I might text you from the bathroom and just be like, hey, thinking of you. Miss you. Can I come see you now? You want to hang out? Yeah, it's it's <laughs> that's modern vacationing right there. That's how you ten do out that. of ten. <laughs> Who doesn't want to go on that vacation? So, um, you guys, so camping is it's hit or miss. Like if I can go in a nice Winnipeg, if I can glamp, glamping. Okay, first of all, I want to tell you something about these words that we come up with, where we merge two words like glamorous and camping and we make glamping I want to tell you that literally makes me want to punch a hole through a wall when we make a word like that and that can and that called portmanteau and that the technical term I, for I, that probably it's where you make Brad and Angelina Brangelina yeah yeah um it's that kind of stuff like we would be Jez and Mass Hobo we'd be Joe Josebo Jezbo Jezbo, would that be who we'd be? Uh, yeah, a portmanteau. Or, 
or portmanteau word is a blend of words in which parts of multiple words are combined into a new word. As in smog combined by blending smoke and fog or motel from motor and hotel. Oh, I like those ones, but I don't like glamping. You but, said it, um, not me. I want you to know that you just learned something else on Smartacular. Portmento. Not pimento, which sounds like pimento cheese. Which, which is delicious, delicious, by the way. Yeah, I love that shit. So uh, We I'm had to we get the food, food in there. We had to get it in there somehow. Pimento cheese is the bomb. And we did eat that out of little jars on that trip. The pimento cheese in the jar. The oh, craft yeah, pimento yeah. cheese in the jar. Came in a little jar. glass jars. It's a little, they still have it. Oh, like, do they? I still find it. Nice. And you and you put it on a Ritz cracker, and that is divine. And you eat 400 of them. It's so good. Or or less. You don't have to eat 400, but there you want to. Okay, so anyways, I digress. Uh, so portmento, not pimento, means glamping. Glamping. Um, I will glamp, um, and and I will stay at a nice Airbnb, and I will stay at a hotel that has a nice, comfortable bed. Um, that's my standards. I will not go in a tent. I might do a yurt. I might do a yurt if it has the nice bed in it. That's like a big fancy tent, but it has a bed. And sometimes it has a microwave. And like, I'll do a yurt if it's a nice yurt. I only want to sleep on beluga caviar. (laughs) I only want to sleep on beluga caviar. My pillow has to be stuffed with the finest cheeses. With the finest pimento cheeses. And when I roll over, I need to have a roll of Ritz crackers sitting right next to the bedside with a lovely bottle of Prosecco. That's the only way I can glamp. Goodness. Actually, all that sounds good. Oh, good. I'm not opposed to it. Yeah. And I want I want the staff to come in and rub my feet every morning with <laughs> lavender oil. And by staff, I mean you, Mastobo. I'll call you from the other room. Oh, God. I'll text you. You're going to be disappointed. You. I'll text you from the other room and say, I miss you. Bring the lavender oil to rub my feet. Thank I'm you. I'm sure somebody will volunteer. There's always somebody with a weird foot fetish. There's always somebody with a weird foot fetish. I get a lot of pictures saying, will you show me your feet? Will you show me your feet? Do sell them. They, they have a can they have a you, website just for that. And you can just sell feet yeah. pics. Can you show me your feet? And I say I can. And then I leave a long, long, long pause. Yes, I can. I'm not going to, but I can. But I'm not going. Well, to. they opened up with "May I see your feet?" Yeah, may I see you not ever again? I may I never see this message again. But no, I get it quite often. It's it's quite often. Um, we, we spoke so camping mass- for 42 minutes and somehow the last five minutes went off to absolute fucking rails. That sounds about right, doesn't it? Isn't that? We were, that was. We stayed focused in for 42 possibly, minutes. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. For us, for us, I feel like we didn't get to pimento cheese till like 43 minutes. Yeah, something yeah. like that. We're- That's, and that food always sends us off on a thing. Yeah. Food always does that because we like food. But I'm proud of us. I'm like, yes, thank you. Thank you, us. We did good. <laughs> we were very focused. That's that's really stellar for us. But we're going to go a little bit more off track right now because we're going to talk about, uh, just for a minute, briefly, we've got to talk about one of Mass Hobo's new housemates that's that you heard briefly a few minutes ago. It's a little kitty, kitty, kitty cat that's staying with him that i think it's his daughter's cat yeah we'll what's say kitty it's my daughter's name? cat what's kitty cat's name Bo. b-e-a-u-x boo okay i love it i love it but it's a girl yes so what's going on with Bo? what's happening she's why is she so a fucking yelling? horny bitch mm-hmm. okay so uh Bo is in heat and I think that listening to a girl cat in heat is one of the most nails on the chalkboard experiences you can endure. It is. I should um, get a fucking medal or a cash prize for this shit. I'm going to send you a cash prize. Don't worry. It's going to be in Bitcoin. <laughs> That's it's going to be worth a half a cent, but you're getting one for sure for taking care of Bo. Yeah. Uh, 
cats and heat are not pleasant and they're they're it, uh, it totally changes their personality they can be a decent cat she's a good cat and until that happens, now yeah and then they're just relentless they're just relentless she goes on her her tangents and crying and all that shit and then she goes to sleep and so while she's been sleeping i've been waking her up i'm like yeah how the fuck do you so like far, it because i'm over here trying to sleep and your ass is fucking being loud so yeah, yeah. what they goes around comes around to sleep so i've been waking her up yeah, and i uh fucking with her while she's asleep. i cry i cry a lot and go to sleep too are you sure she's not in menopause are you sure she's not in menopause not yet be the same okay <laughs> you're like damn i wish she was I just wish she wasn't here. Yeah. She's a sweet cat. She's super sweet. She likes me more than like her. The last cat I took care of because this is yes, this is the second cat I've had from the, my daughter. Mm-hmm. That's a whole other fucking kettle of fish, kettle of salmon. Um. Yeah. Ugh. Anyway, yeah. so this one is tearing up things way less than the last one did. This one has not tried oh, to run right. up my curtains like the other one did. <laughs> I had put up. Bra- I had to put up curtains. Because the last cat broke the blinds. You could see into yeah. my room, so I had to put up curtains. Then she proceeded yeah, to climb the fucking curtains. Yeah, I had one that did that. So now I, when, I move, when I move, I'm going to have to take the curtains out and fix all that shit. Yeah, that's always nice. Um, I like every story that is associated with a cat is something to do with irritation or destruction. When Whenever I tell a cat story about a cat I had, it's always that they... I had a cat that did the same thing, clawed up the curtains, and I came in one day, literally was sitting on top of the curtain rod, was was hanging out up on top of the curtain rod, and my curtains were shredded. They were shredded because she had to like claw her way up, you know, to get to the to the most comfortable place in the house, which is apparently on top of the curtain tiniest rod. curtain that's, rod. That's because you know why? Because you've got to see everything. Because that's the cat, high. You have that's to, the high spot. It's the high spot. You guys see what's going on so you can jump down on someone and claw them, which is what she wanted to do. She was like lurking, you know, to try to attack something. Um, So it's that story or it's that they clawed all the door jams. All of them. All of them. All of them. So far, she's been pretty good about not clawing up shit, which is nice. Uh, also, they like corners of couches. Yeah. They like to claw the furniture, the corner of the couch. And then it's like mean to get them declawed. You're not supposed to do well, that. Well, because it's technically you, um, you're cutting off the first knuckle of their finger. Right. It's not cool. Like, yeah. You don't want to do lot of doctor, A lot of people are refusing the surgery now. A lot of vets won't do it. Yeah, I'm glad. Which is fine. I mean, you can buy I, I had a cat. You can well, take them. Declawed, but it was because the prior owner had done it. Yeah. I didn't do it. We've only done it once but with our cats. We won't do it again. It's That was before we realized yeah. what it was. Um, and there there are ways to deter them, but they're very, cats are very determined. If they're going to be a clawer, they're going to be a clawer. Yeah, they're fucking ass. Cats they, don't give a shit. What are you going to do? Nothing. Yeah, they just look at you like, fuck you. Yeah, I mean, either. what do you, Again, why love you, yourself why like cats you? love themselves and you'll be fine. You'll have all the confidence in the world. Yeah. Yeah, give zero shits about what anybody else thinks. And while they're telling you not to claw, just look at them and claw some more. Yeah, that's there's, the response um, I got. What my ex wife used to do with her cat. Uh, he, uh, they take him to like a little place close to where I live and they glue on the little covers, little. Part. Oh yeah. That's smart. And those last for like a month or two. And it was all, they were only doing, well, they were only good. charging them like 20 bucks. Oh, I hope they make those in designer. They colors. do. They, you can buy them on Amazon and they make them in like glitter, I, like purple glitter. They I have. I wonder if I could put them on my dog so they wouldn't clickety clack. You can. They make, they so they much. just glue on and over time the glue wears off and it doesn't hurt them at all. Or if it gets long enough, yeah. you can. You just, they come off. They're meant yeah, for Yeah, that, that's great. So. Okay, so people out there who have kitty clawing problems, right there. Another important thing, you got how we glamp words together, and now you got that you can get little covers. Yeah, they for sell little kits on Amazon. Cats. I've never done it myself, but you can, we bought like, you can buy like little, they make purple sparkle. They make everything. It's literally every color. They send oh. you a big bag and some glue. I would find a, I would like to do I'd find a reputable place. I would, I would like do some research stuff. online and find ones that people have used. I wouldn't just buy the cheapest ones off Amazon because they're probably from yeah, you make China sure or that somewhere and it'll toxic. fucking melt your cat's feet off. God knows. But, <laughs> um, but they're funny Something when they horrible. get long enough yeah. and they're, and they haven't, cause they can't trim their claws that way either. That's what they scratch for is right. to keep them trim. And so you'll hear yeah. them. You'll hear the little clicks while they're walking around because their paws, because their nails come out a little bit and hit <laughs> the, the little floor. Tippy tap. Yeah, but it's funny because yeah, you'll see the um, tips of their claws sticking out. And like one time he had like blue ones, and so you could see his little Aww. blue tips of his 
of his nails because he was an orange cat, so it was really easy to see on him. That is, I, I actually just want to see it now. That's so cute. So you guys, you learn stuff here on Smartacular, even though you may not want to. You might not be tuning in here thinking, oh, I'm going to learn something. As a matter of fact, I know you're not tuning in thinking that you're going to learn anything, but you are because we're, we're those kind of people. You're going to learn important food tips, pimento cheese with crackers. That's important. Ritz crackers. Or make a grilled okay? cheese with pimento cheese. Oh, or that. You can put some ham um, on it or two, something. Number two. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. So that, there's that. And then there's things like, oh, when you put all these words together, it's called a... Portmanteau. Portmanteau. Or, uh, not pimento, portmanteau. Or you can get the little covers for your clawing kitty cats. There, I sent you a picture you, of you one guys, with pink nails. But it's, 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 it has its nails oh done. God. That's amazing. Oh, oh, I love that so much. That's very cute. You guys want to do it. Just get it. If you have a cat, get these. And you'll save your curtains and your curtain rod. And you'll save yourself from possibly getting jumped on by a cat. Yeah, cats are, uh, they're just a little bit different than dogs. And by a little bit different, I mean completely different. Yeah. Like dogs, dogs love to be a part of the pack. They just want you, they want to hang out and they want to sleep a lot and they want to be on your lap and they want to follow you around and they want treats. And they're like, we're a pack. We're happy. We're not nervous. Now we're, we're all together. Uh, cats are like, sometimes they want to be in the pack when they decide. Cats are that like middle-aged the women. Moment. I'm a middle-aged woman. What do you mean by that? Do they want to be in the other room texting you when they want your attention? Yeah. They want I mean, a little did you, did you not just device? spend 10 minutes telling us how you need the perfect bed and whatever you <laughs> stay in or else you can't move the next day? And I do want And everyone has to cater to you. I mean. The... Okay, I can see it. I, 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 I can see it a little bit. Just a little I'm bit. I'm going to catch a lot I, of heat I, from that if, if I other. I sometimes, I do. It doesn't mean, and it's and like cats. Real... It doesn't mean we don't love you. It's just that's how it is i do i do cry and get bitchy when i'm horny that's See? true that's all true yeah i'm like ah, ah. um i want you to know when when uh the other night when i was streaming which by the way i stream live stream right now like you might listen to this from a year and it might not be true but i live stream on kick live stream usually 7 30 p.m pacific standard time and the other day a troll came in and told me that the sound of my laugh, that he thought I was hot until he heard me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, to be fair, I cackle. I mean, you can hear what's happening when I laugh. But I was like, oh, man, I, I have one of those laughs that's like a boner killer. Apparently, I have Which that. is good. That's a uh, weapon. You can put that in the quiver and use it later. Yeah. If, if, I'm, if, I, if some guy's coming on a little too strong... And I'm like, he's not taking the hint. Like, I'm like, I'm married. I'm not interested in you. And he's still like, oh, but you're so, ooh, yeah. Mm -mm. I could be like, <laughs> and that will kill it. Until you He'll find the go, one guy damn. That, it, that it makes it worse. It'll be, damn, that's a cock wilter right yeah. there. That just took it down five, ten notches. So um, I can't help it. My grandma had this laugh. My grandma that I don't like had this and laugh. And you picked it up. And I inherited it. Yeah, of all the things, it's it's not a sexy. I've been like, how do sexy girls laugh? Like, how do what's a sexy laugh? Like, what I don't is know. That I don't know like? if ever, I don't think I've ever heard like a sexy laugh. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like <laughs> laughing, and that's just <laughs> oh. shitty. That's like fake laughing. And I don't. It's just yeah. fucking laugh, man. If it's funny, fucking laugh. That's way cooler than faking anything. Yeah, I'm. I'm just gonna stick with the cackle. It's there to stay. It's entertaining. I'm, I that's all that matters. If you guys have to hear me cackle, it's just part of smart tacular. It is, it is, I kind of have a scratchy voice. So I guess I have a scratchy laugh, whatever. Demi Moore is sexy. Nobody has told her she's a boner killer because of her laugh. <laughs> I don't know I don't if I've know. ever heard Maybe her laugh have. specifically. I think she just, uh, yeah, she's too, she's too pretty to laugh. I'm sure she's too hot to laugh. Like hot girls, you know what it is? Here's what it is. Hot girls don't laugh. They just, just like they don't fart. Poses. They just smile and oh, mm, 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 mm. when they're sm laughing, it's just a pose. And I'm like a real woman and I just cackle and scare people. 
Oh, but yeah, he was like, I thought you were hot. I, you were hot until you laughed. And I was like, you were on the stream until I booted you <laughs> for saying that shit. So, or, or you look good for your age. We had that last stream when I was like, oh, they said they say that all the time. I, I get that all the time. You look good for your age. I'm like, well, if I was 38, would I look like shit? I mean, you look good for 56, but if you were 10 years younger, you'd look like hell. I don't get that compliment. Just say you look good. Like, yeah. And then somebody said, uh, the other person said, you talk too much. And it's a live stream, which means I'm the you only person be. talking. Yeah. Yeah. I, you're the only person, unless somebody comes into a box as a guest, <laughs> then they can talk. But he was, he was like, you talk too much. And I'm like, would you rather I just sit here and stare at you on this live stream and not you fucking weirdo. I'd call him the cops yeah, on you, it. you goddamn weirdo. You fucking Jeffrey Dahmer motherfucker. Yeah, so everybody pitched in on that one. They're like, uh, she's supposed to? That's like the point. If you don't want it, if don't you know. don't want the person to talk, just get a fucking picture, you idiot. Those don't talk. Yeah, it's like if it moves don't, and talks, don't it's be no on longer, live stream. If it moves and talks, it's supposed to do that. Yeah, I was just like, what live streams have you been on? I don't understand. What year? Where like it was fucking nineteen fifteen. We we haven't invented talkies yet. I guess not. That's what you, you know. What next time you need to do that, you need to have somebody playing the piano in the background and put a black and white filter on and don't talk the whole time. And, and just I can be, like, be like, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll move my mouth and have subtitles yeah. come on during the live stream. It was weird. Actually, not even subtitles. Um, but, it needs to flash to the box of what they say, and then cut back to the video. Yes, just old school. So before talking. Oh. We're going old school. That's it. Yeah, yeah. But you guys, I, uh, you know, join join out there if you'd like to. Apparently, watch me talk too much and cackle. That might be what I do. And sometimes, I get a visit from Mass Hobo, and I'm always very excited. Um, I I wish I could tell you. I have a dream to tell you about Mass Hobo, where you are my husband. We might have to save that for the next. <laughs> oh, podcast. Like, I don't. Yeah, I don't know about this one. Two nights ago, it is. It's a good one. It's it's it might be a whole podcast on its own, but it is at least somewhere I'm somebody's hilarious. husband, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and you you gave me some really good advice in this dream too. Wow, well, just shit. like you would in real life. Yeah, you did, and it's it's pretty funny. And I told some of the people on live stream about it, and they thought it was quite hilarious. So, so you guys, it's it's been a, a real. This one has been first of all our kind of. Welcome back to podcasting podcast because we've been on a little bit of a break. Welcome so back, we're, Caster. We're, we're we're yeah we're totally excited to be back. Um, you're welcome for a trip down memory lane with all of the wonderful things that have to do with camping. You can tell it was a wonderful experience for myself and Masobo, or for I at like least it. one of us. Yeah, I I I had it happen. It happened to me. So uh, that was, <laughs> you learned a little bit about cats. You learned a little bit about humans. You learned a little bit about us. Learned a little bit more. about the English language. Yes. We How try to make to a good sandwich with pimento cheese and ham. We always have a recipe. Something. And so that's why we're here. You guys, we started out this podcast with a promise that we would be here. And we have been. We've been here. And even though we've taken a little sabbatical, we're back. So we're still technically here. Yep. Uh, the other thing we've always promised. Kind of like herpes. You may not see us all the time, but we'll pop up every now and then. That's right. You'll, you'll have a bad case of us pop up again. And uh, we continue to make these quality podcasts that we hope you are listening to. But we want you to know that we are holding firm on our promise of being entertaining background noise. And being a couple clicks above static as white noise. So if if you can't say anything else about us, but don't say anything bad about us. First of all, don't. She has a fragile like ego. This, so don't yeah, bruise I'm it. Yeah, I'm very, very it's like a fragile. Peach. Don't, it's like you, a peach. It bruises so easily. So please don't. Like if you have anything negative to say. You can say um, it to me. Don't. You can tell Mass Hobo, he'll just tell you to fuck off, but you can tell him for sure, 100%. Don't tell me I'll cry or cackle if that happens. Or both. So don't, yeah, at the same time, and that's the worst. So so if you like it, though, then absolutely tell us. Like, tell everyone. Put it out on, like, the po- the Podbean thing where you can make comments, say, this was fucking amazing. Yeah, go flick like, your Podbean, everybody. This is the best thing everybody. I've ever heard. <laughs> Please. Please do. And thank you for joining us. We'll be back with, well, probably an episode about my dream where Mass Hobo was my husband. So uh, take care. We'll see you soon. And thanks for joining us. Y'all have a good one. <laughs>